Well, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to Grady Grace Church of Chester and Port. We're going to be live on Facebook for the next half an hour. Let me see how it goes. Uh, it depends on the Holy Spirit, not on me, because uh, I just uh, say what I am receiving by God's grace. So if you're joining us for the first time, please find us again on uh, at ggchurch.co.uk. Uh, you can also uh, come and meet with us in uh, Backford, just on the outskirts of the city of Chester, on the road towards Ellesmeport. Um, yeah, if you're in Ellesmeport, you probably know where that is as well. Uh, we'd be glad to see you. It's always good to meet in person. It's always good to get together. And... Uh, God is faithful in all these things. So tonight we're going to be uh, uh, opening God's Word in a moment or two. A little reminder that you can join us on Wednesday night as well, 6 p.m. Um, uh, come and find us uh, again and on a Sunday morning at 11. Uh, any other details, come and we will give you the details of those other events in person. So tonight... Uh, yeah let's pray let's give uh, this time to the lord and let's just trust him with every situation that's going on in our lives uh, knowing that he is there for us uh, so heavenly father we just thank you lord tonight thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness thank you for uh, every blessing that you give us thank you for your uh, longevity <clears throat> Thank you that you are always there, that you do not change, that your character is always the same. Thank you for you, the fact that your heart towards us is all, always the same. And thank you that our salvation is always the same because it is based on what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on our behalf on the cross of Calvary and resurrection life uh, from rising again from that empty tomb. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that that is what this means to us. Uh, it means that uh, our heart is secure and uh, we can trust you and we can build our lives on what you've done. <coughs> Join with us tonight, Lord, we pray. Meet with us, speak through us, Lord, we pray. Uh, by your mercy and touch hearts, Lord, we ask. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, tonight we will um, continue on the theme of the day. We will read from Mark's Gospel, um, chapter 4. And um, it says there in verse 35, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in a little ship, and there were also other little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they wake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it that ye have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him and we will maybe also read from uh, 
Luke chapter 10. And uh, from verse uh, 38. It says, Now it, it came to pass that he went, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about, much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall be not taken away from her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the words that we've read tonight. These two stories, these two different instances. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness in them. Uh, thank you for your heart. And thank you, Lord, that, that uh, you communicate with us. Your desire is to commun communicate with us. Fill us now with your spirit, Lord, and just anoint that we would know your heart and your thoughts tonight. Thank you for all of your goodness thank you for all of your care towards us and we pray lord now that you would renew us and uh, visit us in your faithfulness now in the name of our lord jesus christ amen well yes uh, we were saying this morning the connection between those two stories is the question that many people still ask even today and that is uh, Lord do you care uh, it's very easy for us to get caught up into situations into um, the um, problems of our lives the problems of the, of the day the problems of nations problems of the whole globe and the question falls into our mind because does God even care you know does God even care what I'm going through maybe we've served God for many years that was the thing for Martha wasn't it I, I'm serving here I'm doing something for the Lord uh, and it's like oh well does God even notice what I'm doing um, well you know what actually there is a verse uh, that says that isn't there uh, it just comes to mind now uh, it's in Hebrews is it uh, uh, let me just see if I can find it yeah Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 it tells us for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward him towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister when we're tempted to think like martha and say you know does anybody see what i'm doing it's uh, a good question isn't it we were out on the streets um, of chester this afternoon uh, beautiful weather this uh, bank holiday uh, weekend uh, unusual but actually we went uh, out on outreach um, and talking to people and at the beginning it was hard to get into conversations and there's that temptation thought isn't that hard? I didn't actually think that today but I have done it on previous weeks maybe when it's even more difficult or the weather is bad or there's not many people around and it's like 
you know, that thought of, does anybody even care that we're out here? Does anybody even notice? Does God even know that we're trying to, to reach people with the gospel? You know, do, does anyone see? Does anyone care? And, and it's like, no, it, the point is, God knows what we do. Uh, if God has put it on our heart uh, to go out, then he has fruit in it. Sometimes it is uh, uh, fruit. Pray for the people that we spoke to today. We had some amazing conversations. Very open people. One guy stopped and talked for probably getting on for an hour. So um, a very open um really glad to speak wanted to discuss uh, the other guy is one of the other guys is always really quite touched as well by what we we're able to share so we don't know what purpose god has in it and even if we don't talk to anybody god can be doing things in our heart working patience in our heart uh, so uh yeah let's be encouraged with these things when when god does something um through us that, that was one of the things we did say on the street today it's like it's not us we're not out there to do good works it's the spirit of god in us who does these things so if we are doing them in our own natural strength then yes we will get frustrated and there's the implication for uh, for martha that maybe that's what she was doing it was just well i'm doing this because i think it's the thing i ought to do rather than actually you know sit at jesus's feet and find out what he desires he's actually maybe for martha's case uh, jesus would have been quite happy for her to sit with mary and for them both to just receive words of life and encouragement and teaching and doctrine and truth and let the other people who were who wanted food uh, take care of themselves uh, and uh, and there would have been a provision somehow so uh, it's not that um, uh, Jesus was against it uh, but actually Jesus was very gentle with her as well um, you know Martha Martha you, 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 you're caring about these things and it's understandable and when we care about things when we have things on our mind uh, it doesn't mean that we are ungodly that's not let's get that very clear um, Martha often gets the the raw deal in this story but then we also looked at the uh, the story of of Lazarus being raised from the dead this morning and when you see that of that perspective actually Mary gets a raw deal there and uh, Martha is the more spiritual one really so uh, you know this is the point uh, we're all in a process uh, we're not it's not um, it's not that oh Martha was the bad sister this is the, the, the way that we are tempted to think sometimes even as believers uh, but yeah um, Lord do you care do you not care my sister has let me serve alone and loneliness in service that can be also a discouraging thing if we go and we are, we are serving alone this is why actually uh, in our ministry we're always encouraged to go out and do it outreach in twos in pairs in groups if somebody plants a church they should have a team with them to encourage them people reliable people who will support them and encourage them when it gets difficult and we thank God for the people that we have around us in our church uh, who have been faithful for many, many years. Uh, and this is the thing because, you know, uh, going and serving alone is not uh, the best thing. That's the thing that, that Martha was complaining about. It wasn't the fact that she was serving. Maybe she even enjoyed the ministry to people. But it's the fact that she was lonely in it. And so that's why it is, it is always good for us to, to encourage each other uh, and be together and draw near. But yeah, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Wow. Yeah, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's like, uh, God, there is this terrible situation going on and 
you know I'm not going to survive it and God do you even care our boat is going to sink we're all going to be drowned uh, this is a terrible st storm at sea and it's because you wanted us to go across to the other side and we are taking you wow there's almost like this slight accusation against God there if we if, if we weren't with Jesus and he wants to go across the lake to the other side if we were just left to our own advice uh, advice we'd be at home now with our families in bed in this evening rather than out on, on, on the sea uh, in this idea and again sometimes we can have that view with God that Lord it's your fault that I'm in this situation if I hadn't followed you if I hadn't trusted you I'd be rich by now I'd have a, a better job rather than being a, you know poor as a church mouse uh, you know what no again that's not the that's not the heart uh, this idea that actually oh you know uh, it's God's fault that we're in this situation no actually always remember this uh, in um, uh, let's find it Peter let's get the verse right it says uh, 1 Peter 5 7 casting all your care upon him for he careth for you you know that is the question isn't it does God care do you not care Lord we are perishing we are taking you across the sea there is a storm at the sea and you are asleep I always love that verse in, in Psalm 11 where it says his eyelids test talking about the Lord it says his eyelids test us and it's like yeah it's like look you are asleep you don't even know you, you know you don't even know what's going on here Lord we have to wake you up and we have to tell you what's going on here no that's not true God knows what's going on in your life God knows what you're going through he maybe has allowed a little season of test just to to prove us just to see whether we will turn to him see whether we will trust him see whether we will walk with him for us to learn patience for us to learn endurance for us to learn um, uh, maybe grace in situations um, thinking back years ago to a situation uh, I look back well, why did God allow that to happen why did it? and it actually it was for me to learn to forgive people you know it's like wow well, you know, that, that person did that terrible thing to me and it's like actually you know what now I, I needed to learn to forgive people uh, f as much as I have been forgiven because when we turn it around and think about how many things God has forgiven us for you know maybe we become aware of what uh, of somebody else's sin have we ever done that oh no as Christians we would never do that I would never find sin in somebody else's life I would never criticize another Christian yeah we do if we're honest we see things and we're thinking oh so they're doing that are they well that's not great mm -hmm. no, I wouldn't do that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more spiritual than that you know? yeah. no but the point is this we see one sin in someone else's life but we learn to give them grace we learn to 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 uh, cover the sin love covers a multitude of sins we learn to to restore uh, like it says in Galatians uh, chapter 6 uh, restore a brother uh, and bring them back uh, to faithfulness and and protect ourselves in case we are also tempted uh, and uh, you know this is the this is how we deal with it 
But the thing is, maybe we see one sin in someone else's life. But how many sins do we know of in our own life? Be honest. How many times have we sinned? Can we count them? Can we remember them all? Do we, are we conscious of the things that we did years ago? Or the things, even the things that we know that we've done wrong within the last week? Or the things that we haven't done right within the last week? And that's the other thing, is there's so many things that we could have done. There's, there's infinite number of sins in our life that we have all been forgiven of by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we are conscious of how much we have been forgiven, um, he who is forgiven much the same loveth much. Remember that in Luke 7. And that is, uh, that is key for us as believers to always remember how much we have been forgiven and how much we have been cared for by the Lord and then when we realize that we will remember to cast our care upon him because he cares for us that is the point uh, when we remember how much we've been forgiven we remember what God has done for us we remember the cross of Calvary we remember the suffering that he went through when we remember um, he, the, the garden of Gethsemane and the mental anguish and the fact that actually the Godhead was split apart that for that point when Christ was on the cross and he was made sin for us God the Father who cannot look on sin was not able to look upon his son the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that he, actually the Trinity, he was being split apart from himself. Sometimes people look at the Garden of Gethsemane and say, you know, oh, Jesus was saying, let this cup pass from me. In other words, I, I'm reluctant to go through with the cross. That's not what he's saying at all. Never misunderstand that. Jesus was ready to go to the cross because he loved us. He was always prepared to go to the cross. That's why he came to the earth. But the cup that he wanted to pass from him was the separation from God the Father. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? that is the deep anguish that he went through for us that is how much God loves us that is how much God cares for us he's uh, always caring for us and he always will and it's very deep it goes very deep much deeper than we can understand so always remember that whenever we are tempted to say Lord do you care do you care what I'm going through? Do you know what I'm going through? Do you understand? Always remember this, that we have a, a high priest who is, is conscious of what we go through, who has faced temptation, who has gone through suffering. He knows what it's like to be tired and weary. He knows what it's like to be hungry and thirsty. He fasted for 40 days in the wilderness he he served the multitude and, and healed them even on a day when he was very tired uh, he uh, went to the cross and went through all of the pain and anguish and agony for our sake he was tempted he was tried his patience was tried on many occasions. He faced all sorts of people in all sorts of situations, all sorts of accusations. The Pharisees telling them that he was possessed by a devil. Um, the people saying that he was mad. People saying that he was a blasphemer. Uh, people saying that he was a wine-bibber and a glutton. 
people are saying that he, he he spent all of his time with prostitutes and sinners and all of the implication people saying well we know we know abraham's father we don't know who you, you we don't know uh, who your father was in other words um the suggestion was that he was Ill illegitimate and it's like yeah all of these accusations all of these things that people threw at him during his life he went through everything that we face and yet he was without sin so when ever we are tempted to say ah, does god care does anyone care always remember this cast all your cares on him because he cares for you god cares he loves he forgives he heals he draws us with cords of a man he wants that relationship with us he deals with us differently from anyone else again i was saying that to someone on the street today they were saying well you know um, you know why you know how is it that, that god thinks about certain things and um, why does he say this to you so they asked the question why did Jesus say this to somebody I said well actually you know what Jesus deals with people completely differently each one as an individual and he he desires that relationship what he can say to one person he might not say to another and it's like often this is the case you see his interactions with people and when we are tempted to say oh gee god doesn't care about me he does and actually he will come through we ask him into our life we invite him uh, into our heart he will come through he will interact with us he will give us the answers we think oh God has forgotten us. No, he's there. He's there and he cares and he loves us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight that you are, are always there for us. You never leave us, you never forsake us. Thank you, Lord, that your heart to go to Calvary was for us to lay down your life for us to become sin for us that we could be free thank you Lord we love you and we worship you and we give you the glory and Lord whenever we are tempted to question whether you are there whether you hear us whether you are, are able to come through in a situation we remember that your word does tell us that you love us with an everlasting love that you've chosen us to be your special people peculiar people set apart people and that you care for us you are gentle with us thank you lord for who you are and thank you lord for what you've done and lord we pray if there's anyone out there tonight who's watching who has never trusted the lord jesus christ as their personal savior we pray that this would be the time when they say lord i know that i'm in need of forgiveness when i think about how many things i've done wrong in the entirety of my life i know how much forgiveness i need but I trust that when you went to the cross of Calvary you paid for every sin of mine that my forgiveness could be complete and Lord I ask that you would be my saviour I ask for that payment to be on my behalf and I invite you into my heart into my life fill me with your life and your spirit teach me your ways and your word and your truth and encourage me now 
unless I trust you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you said that prayer for the first time, please let somebody know or get in touch uh, and uh, come and find us. Because uh, you are very precious uh, to God, you are very precious to people, you are very precious to us. Uh, and we would love to get to know you. Take care, God bless, and see you again soon.